good morning <clears throat> good morning it is 6 7 a.m. on Wednesday December the 2nd and I don't have a phone mount so I'm pressing this against my window as I drive it's slippery and I really should be driving with both hands but this way I'm not holding the phone I'm just pressing it against the window but I have a story time I have a story time and it's uh, <clears throat> it might be kind of long I'm gonna try and speed it up <clears throat> excuse me but um I was going through my address book while at work and I came across a name and I said to myself ooh ooh oh my gosh I wrote this name down in my address book because it's an Iraqi name and it's an unusual spell and I wanted to remember how to spell it just in case he ever resurrected in the future <clears throat> but let's call him Adel like A-D-L-E Adel minded but that's kind of similar to his name but that's not his name anyway <clears throat> This, the, I hope this is a, an interesting story to you. Okay, so when I was in Mosul, Iraq, one day I was eating in the dining facility with my good friend and uh, co-worker, Major Vincent Navar. <clears throat> I don't care to say his name. He's awesome. And I think he's a general now. If not a full bird colonel, he may be a general. Anyway, he was our deputy at the time. And we were having dinner in the dining facility and uh he was a <clears throat> very slender man and he had two desserts every meal not relevant to the story i'm just remembering he was such a great guy i really liked him um and he and his wife had uh had a deployment baby he went home on r and r and when he redeployed uh whatever months later they had a baby it was really sweet anyway um <clears throat> so we're in the dining facility and um, he nudges me, which was his signal to look at a guy. You know, he had my back. He was really good like that. So I looked up, and this Iraqi man was walking past, and he was looking me dead in the eye. And I realized, yeah, he's been walking back and forth. And <clears throat> let me tell you, this guy was beautiful. I mean, he was a beautiful man. He looked like a... Um, villain like a, a villain in a movie and as a matter of fact specifically he looked like a russian villain in a movie and uh matter of fact uh later when getting to know him as it turns out his father was a rocky and his mother was russian that's why he had those striking good looks piercing eyes just a really good looking man uh, stocky but muscular blah 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 so <clears throat> this guy is staring at me and I'm like no 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 that's you know not that's not for me so I'm ignoring him so of course word gets all around the camp that that I had a boyfriend you know how people tease it was misery <clears throat> so fast forward um, my other co-worker uh, at the time major Jennifer Jennifer Monroe who is now general something Reynolds Cause she's married but uh and she's it's she, matter of fact she went right back to Mosul with another deployment to the Mosul dam but anyway uh she goes out on the road to a courthouse and she's there all day long with meetings and um and so I was back at the compound pretty much by myself other than ops people on the radio and stuff like that so whenever the convoys would come back I'd meet them at the gate you know you know welcome them back let the colonel know whatever happened while he was gone any situational stuff whatever <clears throat> so at this particular time she comes back and she's doing like that duck walk right towards me like coming to me like she's got a mission i'm like oh hi hey jen hey how you doing what's up she grabs my elbow and just keeps walking and she's like dragging me with her i'm like oh my god what's going on so she drags me to my hooch and we're in my trailer and she's like get this I'm like, what, what? And she said, that guy, that Iraqi, that is your boyfriend, he was at the courthouse, and as it turns out, his job was at as an interpreter for the Department of State. I'm like, okay, uh, yeah, fine, okay, cool. And she said, let me tell you, this guy interpreted for six hours straight 
he killed it. I'm like, okay, that's nice. And she's like, you need to talk to this guy. And I'm like, uh, no, it just foreboded. <laughs> no, it's not allowed. No, I don't want to. And she's like, you know, he's really intelligent. He's so good looking. And he just killed it at the courthouse. He talked, interpreted nonstop for six hours to these de delegations, these muktars, muktars, however you say it, the military, the, the uh, town leaders, community leaders. And he did a great job. And in between breaks, all he would do was talk about you. And I'm like, Jen, he doesn't even know my name. She's like, yeah, yes. He's coming to my pal and farewell. But I'm what? 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 Are you crazy? So, <clears throat> so, to hear this out, when it was her hail and farewell, farewell party, she told me that he's invited, but I have to drive across to the other base, circle the runway, go to the other base, pick him up and bring him back. And this was in a couple days. I'm like, okay, I will pick him up and bring him to the party and I'll talk to him. We'll see how it goes. And she's like, fine, you, you won't regret this, blah, blah, blah. So, um, the next day, again, I'm at the dining facility and <laughs> I'm at like a soup tureen or something like that. The next thing I realize, somebody's standing next to me. So I look up and it's this guy, Adol, and he's got a huge grin on his face. He's like, hello, and I'm like, hi. He's like, he's like, is this soup? And I'm like, yes, sir. He's like, is this soup for everyone? I'm like, yes, <laughs> there's plenty of soup for everybody. And so we said, hello, hi, blah, blah, blah. And he gave me his uh, Yahoo Messenger, because this is 2006, 2006, he gave me his Yahoo Messenger. So after lunch, I get back to the office and I sign on Yahoo Messenger and boom, there he is. And we talk, we talk, 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 talk. And I learned a lot about him. And I'm like, oh my gosh, this guy is fascinating. Part of me thought, a lot of it was BS because there's there was so many guys over there who you didn't ask nobody what they did because no matter who they were they would claim that they were out in the streets kicking in doors dragging insurgents by the earlobes you know I never asked anybody because according to them they were the one that was saving the world but uh, listening to this guy it was just an absolutely amazing story he said that he was a professional boxer or MMA or kickboxer or something. I can't remember exactly, but uh, he said he was like a world champion. And I'm like, okay. And you know, I, I, I wasn't a jerk or anything like that, but I just, it's impressive, but I'm not, I don't, I don't want to sound like a jerk. You know, it's just like, I don't want to say I'm not impressed because I don't know how true it is. I don't know how true it is. So, and he's talked about his mother being Russian, his father's Iraqi, and he said when the war first started that uh, he would meet the military in the street and tell them where the insurgents were. And I'm like, okay. And somebody's behind me now flashing their bright lights at me, and I'm traveling a good speed for rain weather. So I'm not going to be, I can't get over because there's another vehicle in that lane. So anyway, they can kick rocks. So yeah, keep on, keep on, keep on flashing your lights. I don't care. So <clears throat> he says that he was working for special forces and I'm like, yeah, great. And we got the popo. Oh, oh, the police is going after the truck that was flashing lights at me. Is he? Is he? Yes. <laughs> That's terrible and unfortunate. But, uh, hey, the speed limit 65. I was going 58 ish. And uh, he was flashing me and then sped around me. <laughs> anyway. I digress, digress, I'm back now. Okay, 
So he told me that he was hired by the military and he was a civilian working with special forces and he would take them to insurgents houses. And, and I was like, yeah, great. Okay, cool. Wonderful. Again, according to everybody, they were the ones doing that. So I'm like, great. I, I just didn't want to be made an idiot of. I, I just, I, I was not one to be bowled over by stories like that. Because when you find out later that it's all BS, you know, you feel stupid. So I literally was not impressed because everybody said that. Boom. So here we go. So it comes to the day of the hail and farewell party. And there's so many other stories about that. He, he, the cop is still behind that red truck. <laughs> you, you hear him gunning his engine? He's going 58 now. Now he's going 58. And the police officer's still behind him. I don't know what's going to happen there. So, it comes day of the hail and farewell. And it was the biggest one I've ever been part of. Let me put my phone down. So, Mr. Police Officer doesn't see. Okay, we're cool. Let's roll. Okay, <clears throat> and he is still gunning his engine now that he sees the police officer pulled over. Well, exited, exited. Okay, so this was the biggest hail and farewell I've ever been involved in. I will digress. Um, <clears throat> Major Monroe paid for her own hail and farewell. That's a different story. I'm going to get into that another time. That is another story, and it's horrible. So, I am sent to go pick this guy up. And bring him back to the hell and farewell. So I get in uh, the vehicle and I go to where he's living, and he comes out and gets in the car. And I'm like, "Hey, how you doing? Good to see you. And I'll say, You're going to enjoy yourself. Well, have you ever been to one of these? Blah blah blah." So <clears throat> we're on our way down the hill to get to <clears throat> the checkpoint where you exit the base, circle the runway, and then enter the next base. And lo and behold, these very words came out of his mouth. Sarah, I have performed a religious ceremony, so it is okay to have sex. He said that. He said that. I was floored, floored. And I looked at him. I didn't even say a word. I was so shocked. He said, uh, you will go to hell, but I will not. And I said to him, no one's having sex at all. And he's like, no, no, it's okay. We can. I performed this religious ceremony, so, so we can. So I didn't say another word. By that time, we rolled up to um, the checkpoint. And at these checkpoints, there are so many rules and regulations. You know, you, you so many rules and regulations so to not get your head blown off for scaring the guards. So we, we get up there, and as I, I roll my window down, I show my cat card, and I said, please remove this gentleman from my vehicle. And uh, he looked at me, looked at him, and saw that he was an Iraqi, and he was removed from the vehicle very quickly. Um, <clears throat> they came back around, you know, after they pulled him out, I said, uh, he is a guest of the Corps of Engineers at a hail and farewell, and he said some very inappropriate things to me in the vehicle, and I wish for him to no longer be a guest at that, so I'm leaving the space now, and he's not coming with me, and they're like, yes, ma'am, fine, okay, so I get to the hail and farewell, and I tell Jennifer what happened, and she is just absolutely dumbstruck. She's like, I cannot believe he did that because he, it's just everything, he, every way he behaved at the courthouse was nothing like that. She's, and she apologized. She said, I'm so sorry. I cannot believe this. I, I feel like an idiot. I'm like, no, no, no. It, it's okay. It, it's, it's okay. It's just like, you know, what did you expect, you know? So, that's that. And here, here, there's just two more little parts to this. So, uh, I, long before I did movie night in Afghanistan, it's just a coincidence that every now and then I would host an outdoor movie in Mosul because we had an outdoor movie screen and projector and we'd watch movies outside at night. So, uh, I had bought a few National Geographic, uh, movies to watch because 
I was new at what I was doing and I was wanting to learn what was going on. So I had a National Geographic uh, infantry in Iraq and then I had another one, National Geographic Special Forces in Iraq. So I let the security team decide what to watch and they chose Special Forces. So we put it on and we're watching it and there's uh, uh, Mad Dog Mad, Mad, um, Mattis is on there, General Mattis. And he's talking about this and that. And then there's a narrator talking about how um, the military utilized local nationals to root out insurgents. And the very next scene was Adel. Adel was on the National Geographic Special Forces movie. It was Adel. And he's walking upright down the street. He's just walking down the street. And literally crouched behind him. You can get this movie. I own this movie. You can find this movie and you will see it for yourself. This can absolutely be verified. Military soldiers are crouching behind Adel as he walks down the street. And he's pointing left and right. That house. That house. That house. True story true story and uh we were just absolutely stunned and one of the security guards said you know what this movie is why this guy is in Mosul this is the reason I'm like what he said um he agreed to do that movie on the condition or he agreed to participate on the condition that they blurred his face out and they did not blur his face so, his family started getting death threats for uh, assisting the U.S. military. So, they moved him from Baghdad to Mosul to protect him. Again, that's another story I heard from many, 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 many Iraqis. The same thing. I always heard the same thing. Uh, matter of fact, we had some engineers that said that they needed special treatment for this or that because their family was killed because of what they were doing for us. However, these same engineers would send photos to us with them on their breaks with the very said family they said was killed. So you just never knew who to believe. And I know it did happen. It did happen. So here's the very last thing. Very last thing. So I wouldn't have anything to do with this man. I was totally done with him. I'd ignore him in the dining facility, blocked him on Messenger and all that. And no matter how many times I blocked him, he'd create a new account and start mail emailing me. This went on for years, and I think I was home like 2008 was the last time I heard from him, and he was getting really angry, and he was in the U.S. I just didn't know exactly where. A U.S. Army Corps of Engineer female, someone with low self-esteem, <sighs> um, helped him get a visa to the U.S., so, and he was in the U.S. with this woman and messaging me. So, he got very angry that I was not enthralled by how wonderful he was and that I did not want to talk to him. And he was, like, yelling at me on Messenger or email or whatever it was saying that um, I was lucky he would talk to me and how I do have time for him because he knows, he knows I have time for him. He knows because he dated other Corps of Engineer women and they didn't have anything to do and all they had time to do was sit and talk to him on Messenger. So that tells me that these uh, women he was talking to literally did not do their job and was just screwing around on the internet all day. Anyway, that's that. That's the story time. Whoever wants to watch that movie with me, just let me know. I'll loan you the, the uh, DVD. Have a good day. Bye.